In this section, I'm going to be showing you how you can use a compressor or a mastering compressor to increase the punchy sound in your audio mastering. So since I already have my stereo output channel settings here visible, let's go ahead and put a very simple compressor into the first insert slot right here. So I'm going to come over to the right hand side and click the select insert button. And then let's go to the dynamics section and let's call up the compressor. And this is a single band compressor, but it's going to have all of the controls that I want to talk to you about so that you understand what a compressor is actually doing. So the very first control that we see here is the threshold control. This determines the level at which the compressor will actually start working. The default is minus 20 dB below zero, which means that for the compressor to actually start working, the volume level itself needs to exceed minus 20 dB below zero, whereas the ratio control determines by how much the signal is going to be reduced or the gain is going to be reduced. And the best way for me to relate how the threshold and ratio controls work is by using my thumb and forefinger and a rubber band. So let's talk about the audio level. The level can go from very quiet when my thumb and my forefinger are touching to very loud when they are as far away from one another as possible. So what a compressor actually does is reduce the gain. So it's actually going to make the sound quieter because it's reducing the gain. So I'm going to use this rubber band to represent what the compressor does because the compressor is going to make it harder for the volume to go beyond where it would without the compressor. So if there's any slack on that rubber band, that represents the signal below the threshold. And as soon as that rubber band gets taut, that is the threshold. And then any level above that, where you actually start to stretch the rubber band, that's going to represent the ratio. Because you can see without the rubber band, your fingers will move very, very easily. But once that rubber band starts to tighten up, then it gets harder to move your fingers or increase the volume. So let's look at the compressor settings again. If we look at the threshold here, again, it's set at the default of minus 20 dB. So anything quieter than minus 20 dB is going to be like having a slacked rubber band. Rubber band isn't doing anything. But then as soon as the level exceeds the threshold, that's when the rubber band starts to offer resistance. So that's where the audio gain is going to start to be reduced. And the ratio control is going to control by what degree the gain is reduced. For example, a ratio of 2 to 1, as we see here at 2.00 to 1, because the ratio is always a representation of a value to 1. It's a ratio, so here it's 2 to 1. That means that to get 1 dB of volume past the threshold, you'd have to exceed the threshold by 2 dB. That's kind of like having a rubber band that doesn't offer a lot of resistance, like if it was just a single rubber band between my fingers here, then it wouldn't be too hard to get more volume because it's not offering as much resistance beyond the threshold. So a ratio of 2 to 1 is not offering a lot of compression. But if we were to increase the ratio, let's just double click here and change that ratio to 4 to 1, that's a lot like doubling up the rubber band. So now we're offering double the resistance. So if you double up that rubber band, now it's really hard to try and get more volume out of that compressor. So with a ratio of 4 to 1, that means that to get one more decibel of volume past the threshold, you're going to have to exceed the threshold by 4 dB. So how are the threshold and ratio related to one another in this graph over on the right hand side of the compressor? Here's how it works. Down here in the lower left hand corner we can see a representation of infinity. This is as quiet as the signal will get. And then as the signal gets louder it's going to go to this little dot which is actually at the minus 20 dB mark in this little VU meter. And I'll show you how to read that in just a moment. But that is the threshold dot. That means that as soon as the signal gets past this point, it's going to start to have its gain reduced. So the somewhat flatter slope is a representation of the ratio. You can see that it starts to get clamped off. It doesn't climb 
freely all the way to the zero dB point. Instead, it gets ramped off. So you can actually change your threshold and ratio controls right here in the graph as well. For example, if you wanted to offer more compression at a quieter volume level, you could just drag that threshold dot down, let's say another almost 10 dB, and then the ratio control, if you wanted a more subtle compression, let's change it to 3 to 1, so about right here. And now if you look at the controls themselves, you've got a threshold of minus 29.5 dB below zero and a ratio of 3 to 1. Now let me show you how you can use the VU meters over here on the graph to help you determine where the compression starts at the threshold and by what degree it's compressed, which is the ratio. So I'm going to press play on our Cubase project here. Now that's quite compressed right now because you can see the audio level right here is coming up to the 30 dB below zero mark, which is right here. And so anything above that is going to be compressed. So as soon as the signal gets past this point on the VU meter, it's going to start the compression. And then you can look over here on the gain reduction meter and see by how much the gain is being reduced and then the overall output level is last. So right now it's being compressed quite a bit. So if we wanted to reduce the amount of compression, we could either change the ratio, let's change it to 2 to 1, now you'll see there's less gain reduction happening, but it's still sounding fairly compressed. So let's make the compressor not engage until the volume gets over 20 dB below zero. So I'm gonna drag that threshold knob or button up to about minus 20 dB. So now you can see that the VU meter over here for the input has to exceed this level before the compressor starts to engage. And then once the volume gets over the threshold, then the compressor really starts working. So now we can set that ratio control to about 4 dB below zero. And we don't hear the compressor working quite so hard. Let me give you an idea of what a compressor sounds like when it works way too hard. I'm going to really lower that threshold control. You'll notice that the overall volume really changed quite a bit got quieter. And that's because a compressor is reducing the gain. See how loud or how much gain is being reduced in this GR or gain reduction meter? So normally the gain needs to be made up for. Normally the compressor is set to auto makeup, but if you're using a lot of compression, you may need to turn off the auto and be able to adjust the volume that's being removed back up to a listenable level. But now with that much compression, it's starting to sound like it's being broadcast on FM radio because FM radio is heavily, heavily compressed. And so with levels like that, you're getting an overcooked sound, an overcompressed sound. So that's how a compressor works. It makes your louds sound softer, but then you use the makeup gain control to make the softs sound louder. So it actually increases the average volumes and makes things sound quite a bit louder, and so they sound quite a bit punchier. However, there's lots of different kinds of compressors, and I want to talk to you about those in the next tutorial.